Okay, so today I'm going to try and do a financial roundup. I have supposed to have been doing one of these at the end of every month, but I haven't. I get distracted, I can't be bothered, I'm a human being, I'm not running a channel that's, you know, producing the same stuff over and over again on a regular basis, um, and I'm undisciplined and I procrastinate. But I have decided that I will do a six month roundup. So this is my end of June, first six months, first half of 2024 roundup. The last financial update I did was the month where I think I had finished paying all the bits for the year. So what tends to happen is all my big bills come at the beginning of the year and then by May everything's paid off. So my car insurance is due for the year, my new um, regular direct debits are updated for the year so you've got your council tax and your water rates and all this sort of thing and then I know for the year what I'm going to be generally paying out for because apart from all the, the stuff that's, that's usual and planned I don't tend to have big extra expenses I don't have subscriptions, I don't go on expensive holidays, um, I tend not to buy a lot of stuff. So after that it gets a bit boring. So I've done my roundup for all the big bills for the year and now I just wanted to do a six month overview. Now this six months in terms of probably certainly income and perhaps outgoings as well is more than the whole year. I've done my predictions for the whole year and the first half of this year certainly income wise I have made more money for this half than I expect to make in the second half and I'll explain why as I go along. It's nothing particularly amazing and of course you never know what's going to happen in that second half of the year. In terms of expenses um, I've spent more in certain categories this year than I normally would. So I have what I call an everything else category and that is basically everything that doesn't fit into everything else. And it, the last couple of months have been two months of replacing things. So I'm not a one for buying new stuff but if something that I use a lot or I need in my life wears out or breaks I will replace it. So in June it was my new trainers which I really desperately needed. Um, what else have I bought? I've also bought my new secondhand walking boots on Vinted. There are a couple of other things I've just ordered for July which um, haven't arrived yet so I haven't talked about them. One is another pair of shoes. Um, they're just like slip-ons, just really average, ordinary ballerina pumps. I was looking in the shops and they're really expensive now. I don't tend to go into fashion shops, so I hadn't realised just how much the prices had risen in certain areas. So I went on Vinted and I fa found a pair of nearly new second-hand for £4.67. You're not going to get that in the shops. And they're just slip-ons for, you know, nipping across the road, going out to put the bins out, that sort of thing. So I didn't want to pay a lot for them. I have two pairs one has holes in and they're the ones I use for literally going out to the bins I have another pair that I love but they're really old uh, they're still in quite good nick but um, because they're a cloth upper they've stretched over time and they're now more of a size 8 than a size 7 so every time I walk around to them they fall off so I needed to get a new pair and I didn't want to spend a lot of money it's really not worth it for what I'm getting so I bought those on Vinted as well um, what else have I bought? I bought my new selfie stick. I'm still using the old one on here. So I broke the tripod so at the moment it's stuck in a bottle. <laughs> Which kind of does the job, but I've kind of reached the point where, you know what, I need something a bit better now. The one I have bought has a really long extendable tripod on it. It'll go up to, I think it's a, almost uh, it's 125 centimetres, which is a good height for me. So I could do standing up to camera. Um, on the tripod where it's standing on the floor it'll enable me to do a lot more things um, and unlike this one that I have I can do portrait as well as landscape this one if I want to do uh, a portrait I have to turn the whole thing on its side and hold it that way whereas this one the extendable um, slot for the phone 
will do everything. So I've bought that stuff. Uh, what else have I bought? Let me have a think. I also took a friend out to lunch when I was down at my parents um, because I've missed her birthday in May and we just went to the pub. It wasn't massively expensive, but it's things that I don't normally pay for. I don't normally go out to eat because it's so expensive now. So whenever I do these, I always seem to get my figures wrong. <laughs> no matter how much I try and calculate everything like I have here, I always seem to get something wrong and somebody points out and goes, oh, you got that wrong. Ugh. Yes, I get stuff wrong. Surprise, surprise, I'm a human being. Right, so I'm going to go through this list. I'm going to start with income because income, income is quite complicated. There's quite a lot of it and it comes from various places. So first of all, the cleaning work. On average, I do eight and a half hours a week, a week cleaning work. That's one private client and two businesses. It's not very much. It's it pays just above the minimum wage, but it's very local to me. It doesn't put me out and it just tips the balance on my income. So for the first six months of this year, I have earned £2,410 from that. Now, I'm not doing that eight and a half hours a week every single week. There might be odd weeks where I do a bit more because I'm asked to do a bit more. There will be others where, like, where I've just been away, so I've lost two weeks and that happens four times a year. So that's what I have actually earned so far this year, £2,410 in the cleaning work. Um, universal credit. So I do put this in the income category, although people would say it's not an income, you didn't earn it, but it's there, it's part of the pot that goes in. Now I'm expecting my claim to end next month, 21st of August. Um, I've already built that ending into this year's budget, so I know what my income will be for this year, even when that stops, and I'm okay for this year. It's what happens next year <coughs> that changes. So this year, from Universal Credit, I have um, received £2,944. And that's based on me being part of the managed migration from working tax credits that was last year and it's a, a protected year because I'm classed as a startup business, um, um, a startup claimant. Um, I don't fit all the categories for universal credit but because it's a startup year you are protected and there are certain things they allow for like having more than £6,000 in savings. Of course they do knock some of that off your um, your monthly claim so they take into account the savings that I have and they knock off pence per I think it's pence per 240 pounds something like that so they do take some of it back it's not like it's just free money so to speak the other thing <coughs> that I iron for is uh, say interest on savings and the beginning of the year has earned me probably more than half of my interest and that's because I had two fixed bond accounts which matured earlier this year so the savings um, the savings bulk of that money was there but also the interest was building up in that account and I couldn't touch it it wasn't like it was a drawdown every month so this this first six months I have earned 945 pounds and 12 pence in banking interest that's going to be a lot lower for the second half of the year because um, I have recently done a post about how I drip feed from easy access savings into fixed savings. My fixed savings accounts are now set up and none of those will come to fruition until next year. So that, that money has gone until next year. So that won't count into this year's income. And all I have left now really is my easy access savings account and I expect the interest rate on that is going to drop in the next couple of months. So that's what I've earned from that. So far this year on Vinted, I have made £149.04. Now, I don't trade as a Vinted seller. I sell stuff from my own wardrobe that I no longer wear. And I sell things that other people give to me because they can't be bothered to sort it out themselves. And they're just like, take this away, do what you like with it, sell it, whatever. And my friend, 
who is down there, my parents does that. She had a massive wardrobe clear out at the beginning of the year, gave me like two or three black full-size rubbish sacks full of clothes she hadn't worn in years and said, do what you like with it. I can't be bothered to take it down the charity shop. And my mum does a similar thing where in small amounts she'll have a sort out and put out a load of stuff. Like when I've just been down, she's pulled out a load of handbags and she'll just say, just take it and do what you like with it. And I sell it. So none of the vintage stuff that I sell comes with um, an expense. I haven't bought anything. Um, the marketing is very quick and simple. You stick your photos on vintage, you put a description in and someone buys it. All the postage is paid for at the other end by the buyer. So I have no additional expenses. So that £149.04, and four pence, if you minus out the time it takes me to list stuff, is pure profit and make some space in my home. Um, the other thing that I am earning from now is YouTube. So I got monetized in YouTube right at the end of December. And so far this year, I have made £1,053.21. Now, I was looking at my July figures, and at time of recording, we are halfway through July. And my God, my YouTube channel has really tanked money-wise this month. I don't know why. Um, it certainly seems that there are certain posts that people like more than others. People like the money ones, like this sort of thing. I don't mean like people seem. I think some people think that when I do some of the money ones, where it's um, it's advice, but it's not financial advice. That maybe I'm a bit clickbaity, but it's not. All the stuff that I, all the posts that I do, are things that I do in my real life. So if I do a post that's money related. It's not because I'm just trying to garner some extra watches and some extra money. It's because that's a method I use. So the recent post I did about drip feeding from an easy access savings account into a fixed savings account to increase the interest rate on my savings isn't because, oh, I read about that on a website like Money Saving Expert. It's because that's what I have physically spent the beginning of July doing, is setting up these accounts so that I can drip feed the money. That is an actual thing I do. Um, so I don't know what's going on with my YouTube. I don't know if YouTube has changed the way it works. I seem to have plateaued in terms of subscribers. I'm quite close to 3,000 subscribers, but it's stalled. I feel like it's really stalled the last month or so. And those numbers seem to have evened out in terms of watches. So I don't know if I've reached my maximum on YouTube based on what I do. Um... I had an average per month that I wanted to earn, and I seem to be hitting that, so it's not terrible. But obviously, like all income, you can't rely on it. And that's why I have multiple pots. So my next income is surveys and market research. So far this year, I have made £961.67 from doing, mostly taking surveys through various... Um, apps and websites and some market research which is harder to get but pays much better for the time that's spent doing it. So I have done one hour Zoom calls, group Zoom calls about a particular subject and made 50 quid. Um, surveys might only pay you pence per survey. But I have the time to do it, it fits in because I can sit in sit down in between doing work and do a few surveys. I can sit down in the evening when I'm watching TV and just do surveys. So it's not taking out time from my day. Um, a couple of sites that I regularly used to use have dropped off the radar. They seem to have stopped offering surveys. And this happens quite a lot where you're, you'll be really busy on a site and then suddenly you'll stop getting surveys. And I don't know if it's because of the way the algorithms work, what they're sending me, or whether the sites just aren't getting the work in. Um, I also have a problem where, because of the, the age of my phone, I bought my phone at the beginning of 2020, my Galaxy S7, and it wasn't the latest phone then. And what tends to happen is that as apps update, they start to obsolete older models of phones. So I've had one survey site that I use called Your View, which I've really enjoyed this year. It's been a really good one that I've only joined this year. It's been really good. And suddenly it no longer works on my phone. I was ready to cash out. So I'd reached the limit. I was ready to cash out and I can't get my money because the app won't update. 
So I'm waiting for them to send me the money separately. They've agreed to send me what's on my account and then I'm going to have to remove the app until I upgrade my phone. It's a bit of a shame. There's a couple of others that have also just stopped sending surveys or just become unworkable because they've raised the limit on how much you earn before you cash out and it then becomes a pointless exercise. So I've lost, I think, three survey sites this year. So that's where I am with that. Um, hopefully that will stay the same in the second half of the year. But again, you can never tell. Some survey sites suddenly drop off. They decide they're going to close down. You'll get new ones appear. It's always changing. Um, income from my business. So I have badly neglected my clothing design business, Falsieri Designs, for the last year or so. I lost my motivation, I needed to make my money somewhere a bit more reliable, which is why I have so many of these little little side hustles and little extra pots. I just needed a break from it. The market isn't good at the moment for being a business. Cost of living crisis is not going away. People are under pressure. There's not a lot of spare money going around. So my income is down. I made a prediction at the beginning of the year for what I thought I might earn this year and that is on track. So this year so far, I have, uh, up to the end of June, I have only made £339.10. Now, my business doesn't have lots of expenses. I need to pay out my business insurance every year, and I've just um, gone over to a new company in May, which is significantly cheaper than my previous one. The, uh, I also pay out for uh, I've just bought the Cyber, uh, Cyberlink Power Director uh, paid version. Some of that will come in as part of the business because I do a lot of videos and things that are business related. But that's on track for what I expect to earn this year. I am developing some new product lines. Suddenly this last month I've become enthusiastic about the business again. So I'm hoping that things will change depending on what industry environment is like. We've just had a new government. I would imagine that people and businesses and just the economy in general is going to be hovering a little bit because it's not sure how things are going to pan out. I'm just going with it. I don't need the money from the business to survive. All the other things that I do help to bring in an income that means I'm earning enough to live on. And, you know, just having that at the moment is an absolute blooming miracle. My book this year, I am also very lazy about promoting the book that I wrote. Um, I don't promote it, which is really terrible of me. And I've started trying to promote it th through this channel and just doing a bit better. And I've sold more books this year than I have in the last three years. So marketing does work. It just depends on how you do it. I mention it every so often in posts like this one. Um, and I've also got a link to all the places where I sell, all the places where I am visible, um, and I keep that in the show notes now. I do a whole list. Someone said, oh, you should be linking all your sites in your YouTube show notes. So I do that every time now. So you can go down to the show notes now and you can see all the links where I do different things. So my business is there. My book is there. My two Etsy shops are there. All that sort of thing. So you can just go and have a look through that and either click on them or don't click on them. It's up to you. Um, other income, right, uh, Coffee, which is a content creator donation site. It is not specifically related to YouTube. It's for all content creators who need a platform where people can donate to their cause, to their business, without necessarily buying a product. Um, I've had it for a few years, never made anything on it, and then once this channel became monetized for some reason, people started donating to it, and that's been absolutely fantastic. So far this year, I've made £204 on that gross before all the fees get taken out for that. And that's been a real good addition because it just adds a little bit of extra. The last income that I have is the um, uh, medicines evaluation work that I do. So I volunteer for um, medical drug trials Last year I did really well on that. I, I only did one um, one medical trial, but it paid me over £2,500 because they pay well. This year I did a screening for one. Um, I didn't fail the screening, 
uh, well, I kind of failed the next stage of the screening because it was a bit more involved than I'm used to medically and I nearly passed out waiting to go in to have it done because I got a bit anxious about it. Um, so they knocked me off that one, but you get paid for doing the medical screenings. So the few hours that I spent there having ECGs and blood tests, blah, 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 they pay you for your time that, that you've taken out of your life to do that. So I made £145. There's always a chance that I will suddenly get another trial come up and I get an invite to come and screen for that and I might get it. Last year, the one I did was in August even though I'd applied all year and sometimes you'll get you'll hear nothing for months and months and months and then suddenly you'll get one and you're in. So I haven't planned for that as an income this year because I get a feeling I'm not going to get anything this year. So if I do get something and it pays a couple of thousand pounds, that's additional money. I haven't planned for that in my budget for this year. So all of that for the first six months of this year comes to a total income, gross income of £9,209.66. Now that income, based on my expectation for the whole year, is more this six months than I expect in the second six months because I'm guessing that I'm going to make just under £16,000 in income this year. So that first half is a bit higher and a lot of that has to do with um, say my, the interest that I've earned on uh, my savings where I've had those fixed bond accounts come out I don't have any of those for the second half of the year so we'll see how things go um, I'm kind of covered so it's okay you know if the second half drops a bit it's not going to be a tragedy so in terms of outgoings now my outgoings for the first half of this year have been less than my income so I've already have a small profit but of course that will change as well looking at the predictions I expect my outgoings to probably be higher for the second half of the year but we'll see what happens so my first outgoing is energy I have dual fuel gas and electric without Fox the market I pay a set direct debit every month which goes into my account and then every month the physical usage is taken out of that so I pay £40 a month for my direct debit um, I've, so I've paid six of those this year which comes to £240 and my actual usage spend is £243.27 now I already have money in the account left over from last year I tend not to ask for any of the money I just leave it there because my direct debit is quite low but my usage also tends to be low but of course energy prices are always changing I'd rather leave the money there so I've, I'm always ahead of the game because I don't want them to suddenly say um, you know, it's coming up to winter, you're clearly not going to have enough money in your account, we're going to put your direct debit up to 80 quid or something. So they won't do that. So that's my spend on that. My rent, uh, my rent is uh, 600, is it 600 or 650 a month? Let me just check that. My rent is currently 600 a month. Now, because I don't pass credit checks when I first moved in here, I was put onto a six-month tenancy, which was standard, and I paid the full six months in advance because I don't pass credit checks. So if I pay it in advance, I'm fully paid up for the term. After a few years, they said, do you want to go into one-year tenancies? We'll keep the payments at every six months. So that's what I've been doing since then. So currently I'm paying 3600 every six months and my six months are in April and October. So I've paid the six months, that's the physical spend that I've made so far this year, and then in October, my tenancy will come up for renewal. I am expecting it to go up another 50 pounds, and then, so October second half, that's gonna be higher than now. So we'll see what happens with that. So that's why my rent, the physical spend I have made, is £3,600 and that will cover me now up to October. Food spend so far this year, I've been trying to cut back on all the processed rubbish that I've been snacking on. Um, I need to get my health in order, I need to get fitter, I need to lose weight and I'm trying to do that by just streamlining what I eat. So I'm not buying a lot of the rubbish that I used to do, I'm trying to get my brain back into gear so that I'm not snacking 
la di da di da so far this year because I have a, a rule of when I go to Morrison's I only buy yellow sticker food so I only buy on discount so I go at certain times of the week when um, there are certain there are certain evenings or days where there are more yellow stickers so Sunday morning is a good one I always go when they open on Sunday morning and then I go straight off and do my cleaning work so if you check out my um, regular updates where I do my week in the life sort of thing within that there will be my yellow sticker hauls and that's basically what I'm buying there when I go to shop at Sainsbury's now because I have two survey sites where I earn nectar points and that goes straight into my nectar account I have quite a good um, amount of money in my nectar card so I've stopped spending money in Sainsbury's and I only buy on nectar points so that's effectively free free food and I use the cashback apps to get freebies and discounts um, on certain branded products that are being promoted if I think it fits in with my the way I eat, what I eat and that sort of thing. I also sometimes shop at Tesco when I get Tesco gift cards from doing surveys. I don't get so many of those now but I do have three gift cards left which I'm waiting to go to Tesco to spend on and I'm waiting I'm waiting really for some freebies to come up on my cashback accounts, Green Genie, Checkout Smart and Shopmium and I'm going to go and buy those with the gift cards and then I can cash back in the money from those. So that puts the money back into the bank. Um, what else? So my everything else account, which is literally everything else. So where I've bought the trainers, where I've bought the new hiking boots, vintage, that sort of thing, dental, um, anything that doesn't count as food or another regular bill goes into that. And so far this year, I have spent £304.27. That's quite a, a broad spectrum. So anything that I buy in the supermarket that isn't food, so toiletries, cleaning products, anything that's dental, all, uh, like the, any, any clothes I buy, everything goes on that. And I don't tend to spend a lot. I tend to buy things when they wear out or they break or they need replacing for some other reason. So that's why that spend is relatively low. I don't go out to eat. I go, go, don't go to the pub. I'm just not interested. This year on petrol, I have spent so far £192.58. I don't use my car a lot. I use it once a week to go down the road to my private cleaning job. That's only a few miles. I use it every three months to go to see my family. That's a big trip. That's basically a road trip of about five, five and a half hours. That's really where the money goes. And then I've started doing my hikes um, reasonably locally, so it's not eating into that budget very much. So my petrol spend is still looking pretty good for this year. I do less than 4,000 miles a year, so it's not costing that much. Fees. Now, I have a kind of a fees category, and that is massive this year. It's just so much bigger than it has been in the past. Fees accounts for coffee donations, PayPal, Shopify, two Etsy stores, all that sort of thing. That this year so far has come to £928.27. Now within that includes refunds, so if someone buys something on my Etsy um, or my Shopify and they've decided to return an item, I class that in as a fee. Um, because I've grossed on all the other accounts, so I've grossed on, say, um, my business. So I keep the amounts in that have been physically bought, but obviously if someone returns something, instead of knocking it off that gross amount, I put it into the fees section so it balances out. So that's partly why that was high, because I had a problem with the post office at the beginning of the year, not delivering something by the deadline they were paid to deliver it by and then of course the item missed its deadline for the customer and the customer returned it because they had no use for it now so that was a massive pain and that's why that in part has been higher my car my car varies per year i ha i pay into a service and mot package with the the dealership 
so that every year everything gets done properly. I know how much it's going to cost because I put in every month and then provided there's nothing unusual in my service or my MOT, I come out not paying anything. So I'm paying a regular small amount every month and it builds up over the year. I go in, they take out that out of the account and I come out not spending any money unless it's an extra. So this year I had no extras. A service was fine, it was a basic service, we passed our MOT, so I didn't have to spend anything on my MOT or my service. On top of that, of course, is car tax. Now at the moment, uh, car tax is really, really cheap for my car. It's only £20 for the year, so I paid that. My car insurance was higher this year, £313.60. Um, and uh, our breakdown cover, a tiny discount, was £43 for a full package which I have with emergency assist so this year my car has cost me ignoring petrol and ignoring any emergencies that happen like maybe a flat tire or I don't know maybe to replace a windscreen or god knows what else might happen um, has come to 456 pounds and 76 pence for my little car brilliant if nothing else goes wrong that's all I've paid this year for the car water I'm really careful with my water usage I'm on metered water so I'm in good control of my water. The bills tend not to go up much each year. So far this year my water has cost me £84.46 up to the end of June. I'm really careful about what I do with the grey water that comes out the flat. It tends to go like showers, things like that. It goes on the garden in hot weather. When it's rained a lot obviously I have no room for it. So it, But I, I also try to ration you know, washing up, I do washing up once a day. I'm really careful with my laundry. I only do a full load, so I probably only do a couple of washes a month because I don't need lots of different clothes. I'm working from home, and I tend to wear things enough before they need washing. So I tend to do two, maybe three loads a month, and um, I try to be really careful about how long my showers last and how often I shower etc 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 so that's why my water bill is nice and low and of course I'm in control of that uh, council tax so far this year has cost me £429.17 I'm in a flat I'm a single occup occupancy I'm a band A so my bill is the cheapest it can possibly be whilst living in a bricks and mortar place uh, my flat insurance went up again this year. I'm stuck with my insurer because it's tied to my rental agreement and I've basically scrimmed it right down to the absolute basic that I can pay for. Uh, my business insurance covers all my business stuff and all my tech so I don't have to have that on my home insurance. So my insurance cost me £225.78 and my phone with Smarty costs has so far this year cost me £112.50. I have unlimited data, I only have 4Gs, I don't have broadband. Um, for part of this year it's been quite glitchy, the 4Gs have been really slow and I was starting to think oh god I'm just going to have to put up with a really bad service or change to a more expensive service. I know that they have been removing the 3Gs from their masts and I know there's been a lot of work going on and they said that was going to go on until September suddenly the last few weeks my 4G's have got a lot better it seems to be running really well all the time even at the times when people are at home so I think that they've done most of that work and those signals have now returned to normal because it's actually pretty good again um, and that does for me I don't have a really massively high usage I find that YouTube uploads okay. I don't have lagging when I'm watching videos. Uploading my videos can take a bit of time sometimes if it's a long video, but I just go off and do something else and wait for it to sort itself out. I'm not in that much of a rush. So my total outgoings so far for the first half of this year have come to £6,729.21. And, and bearing in mind that my income was um, just over 9,000 I have so far this year profited. That of course all spare money goes into savings and then I pull out money as and when I need it. So that's how the first six months of my year looks and that's how it looks for someone like me who is pretty frugal. I don't feel like I live a pauper's life. I know lots of you out there watching think I do you think I'm scrimping and scraping and living a miserable life. I'm not. 
Uh, I'm a massive introvert. I don't have a need for a social life. I like to do things on my own. My idea of going out is going on a hike on the Lancashire Moors on my own, no people, talking to my phone, showing you the results, and that's my idea of a day out. I don't require lots of tech. I don't need to upgrade lots of stuff. Um, I find ways to enjoy my spare time how I want. My Lloyd's Club account gives me six free cinema tickets a year, which is more than I can use because most of what appears in the cinema is absolute trash that I wouldn't watch. And trying to use six, six, six tickets a year is hard work. I usually only use three. I think I've used two this year. Um, they renew in October, so I haven't got long to use them. But trying to find something worth watching and worth dragging myself into town for is hard work. So I like to keep my entertainment simple. I work from home, so I don't have a lot of travel. I do want to do a whole bunch more hikes. I have another five hikes planned so far for this year. Um, and that's why I've got my new hiking boots, because my other ones have fallen to bits. So I'm hoping I can get out and do those. Now, I have recorded this post middle of July. You probably won't see it until the end of July, because I have a bit of a backlog at the moment. Um, but that is the first six months of 2024, financially rounded up. Um, I'm sure there will be comments. I'm sure there will be questions. I'm sure some of you will have concerns. I'm fine. I like my little life as a general rule. And now that I'm getting more enthusiastic about being creative again in my business, that is adding to my workload and keeping me very occupied. So, you know, I don't want for anything. I am not into stuff. I don't particularly enjoy spending money. I like it when I spend it well. I like it when I spend it on things I need, but that doesn't happen an awful lot. And I'd rather see the money grow in my account for emergencies and for backup. It gives me huge peace of mind to know that should I have a little financial catastrophe, I'm not going to be stressing about it. I won't have to take out debt to cover it. Um, everything is covered and that makes me happy because I didn't always have that and I wasn't always of that mindset. So to have nailed that is incredibly good for my mental well-being. It makes me feel more secure in a time where we have very little financial security. And yeah, I think that pretty much covers my first six months. Comments and questions below as always. Do check out some of the links in my show notes. Um, and thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing and for watching and for putting up with adverts that mean I get to add to my small income there. Thank you for people who donate to coffee and the super thanks that you can get on YouTube. And yeah, just thank you for being here. It's really interesting how well small channels like mine do day in the life channels point and shoot channels to me that is what youtube is about and i follow lots of channels like that and they really make my week when i see people living lives like mine dealing with the same challenges like mine and it reminds me that yeah a lot of us are in similar positions and it's comforting and I learn things along the way. I've learned so much from these small channels. And I know that people are learning tips and tricks for how to make incremental improvements to their life by watching what I do as well. And I'm always happy to offer advice and happy to take advice. And I'm always learning from the YouTube channels that I follow. So thank you for being here. Um, it's much appreciated. This really adds a level to my life, having this little channel. I love doing this. Um, it helps keep me sane in a very, very insane world at the moment. Thank you for watching and I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye.